Slideshow, slideshow. Yeah, there we go. Let's start the slideshow. One day I'll learn how to use technology. No, not really. Anyways, it's me, Don, again. And uh, this is going to be kind of a short work stream. Forgive my mood, I'm in a good mood. I was informed by my... You can't see it, but I'm going to do air quotes friends that I uh, don't radiate enough positivity. So I'm going to be uh, a little more upbeat this video. Just to spite them. But in a good way, because I need to be more positive. Anyway, uh, this is going to be a really short, uh, shorter work stream. This is going to be developing character, because believe me, you need it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. It's not very funny, though. I mean, everything's funny. It's great. This is just a, a positive day full of positivity. But in all seriousness, uh, I'm a firm believer that all story... Uh, flows from uh, character, character and setting, but again, they they feed off each other, but character is more important. Um, there are people that disagree with me, a lot of people that disagree with me, but I don't really consider them actual human beings. Anyways, so this is going to be a brief overview of uh, kind of what I go through when I create a character, and some of the key points you hit on. Uh, it's going to be kind of... Um, interactive to the point, well not really interactive, but I'm going to fill in the blanks as I go along. I'm just, just going to do the process uh, right now. It's not pre-made like my other ones are. It is, but to a certain extent. First things, what do you need to know before you create a character? Obviously physical description. Uh, again, none of these are particularly necessary, so to speak. I mean, kind of personalities, flaws, and virtues, that's probably, I mean, if you're going to create a character, it has, has to have personalities, has to have flaws and virtues. But for the most part, you can have a story where you never describe what your character looks like. You never describe the background, doesn't deal with their past, particularly in a short story or a short story anthology. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be looking at a character sort of long form. And also for other mediums, such as if you're like a pen and paper RPG or something like that, or... Any sort of video game RPG that allows you to put in your background, even though it might not matter, but for flavor you might want it. So physical description is first. Background, and we'll get into what these mean in their own slides. Personality, flaws and virtues, and their past. Basic outline of what a character is before you make a character. Uh, and you can repeat this for any number of characters in the stories. Uh, even for like the small ones as well. Because like the characters you might you, that might not show up for more than five pages of a story or ten minutes of a film or whatever, th by making this for them, it's a lot easier to write those characters. So it kind of helps out in the long run. You take like five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever, and it saves you a whole lot of trouble. All right. First thing, physical description. Now I'm just gonna fill this out right now. We're just gonna use. My, my description, rather. So, let me escape out of here and start to fill this in. So, ethnicity. Hey. Okay. Male. By the way, this is as close as any of you are going to get to seeing me. No, that's not true, but kind of is. Whoops. color. This one's a little bit tricky because I have one of those kinds of hair colors that changes depending on how long it is. So like when sort of, particularly my facial hair, like it comes in kind of like a, a, a light brown and it turns into like a jet black. My hair is the same way. Uh, so we'll just say, eh, we'll just say black. And then for the eye color, again, I'm center heterochromic. So we technically have two eye colors green and, and brown. So we just go for what they consider the true color, green. 
And then other distinguishing characteristics. Uh, this could be, sorry. Masses. I have two tattoos. Things like that for other. I and mean, this other can be as, as big as you want it to be. Um, so just for simplicity's sake, we'll put that down there. And then for background. Okay, economic, grew up middle class. This whole thing is going to be about me. Uh, this actually part kind of isn't. So cultural, let's see. Uh, Midwest. And this could be anything as well. It's not necessarily tied to, it's not like you don't have to be like, oh, well, I'm Hispanic or I'm Asian or I'm Irish or anything like that. Uh, it could be anything that you really wanted to be. Again, if you're from Boston or your character's from Boston, you just put down Boston because Boston's kind of its, its own creature. Uh, same thing like Los Angeles or Portland. You know, Portland's not going to be the same kind of culture as, say, Biloxi. Uh, then geographic, actually, Midwest should be put right there. And we'll just put for cultural, we'll say, eh, blue collar, Irish. or of Irish descent, we'll say either way. Irish slash uh, Dutch. Why not? Again, none of that particularly matters, although it might further down the line. That's my assistant, my German Shepherd puppy, Zoe. Hey, come here. Come here. What do you want? What are you trying to do? Quiet call. But, again, it's always nice to fill this out, because even if you never use it, you have it there. If you're stuck or anything like that. All right, personality. Now, again, this one's intentionally blank, so we're just going to create personality right off the bat. Um... We'll say taciturn. Doesn't speak a lot. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, despite that, will be affable. I just kind of go down the, the lines of what you want the character to be. And even if you don't have the character fully fledged out already, uh, this can help you do it. Like, okay, what do you want to do? It. You know, like, what do you want the character to be? Like, when you ask yourself a question, your mind automatically wants to create an answer for it. So it makes writing a little bit easier. Um, let's see what else. It's a taciturn now. So it doesn't speak much. Nice nonetheless. Um, hmm. What should we be? Oh, okay. inquisitive. Likes to, likes to ask questions. Um, uh, what else? Uh, determined, motivated. And again, this is just a brief file, and this can be as long as you want it to be. Uh, you don't even necessarily need to use my layout, although it's here if you wanted to. Um, determined, motivated. Uh, let's get some flaws in here. Oh, we'll save the flaws for later down here. Because... All of these are necessarily good things. I mean, you can be taciturn because you just don't speak a lot, because you're kind of calm and reserved. Or you can be taciturn because you're a dickhead, you just don't like to talk to people. Like me. Uh, affable, again, not necessarily a good thing. You can be affable and people can like you, but it could be an act. It could be manipulating them. Or you could just be nice. Inquisitive, again, you could be overly curious, you know, getting in people's business where, you know, sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Or you could just be inquisitive in general. You know, determined, motivated, you know. The Joker in Dark Knight was determined and motivated. But then again, so was Batman. So again, it, it depends on how you particularly define those things. This is just sort of a, a general outline of the character. Okay, flaws and virtues. We're going to be looking up over here, uh, Taciturn and Flaws and Virtues. Uh, okay. Uh, Taciturn will make it... As a virtue, we'll say that good listener. Man, you see that? That's my English. That's my English. Uh, it's my English education coming through. Good listener. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. 
Affable, uh, comfortable to be around. Be around, uh, let's see. Get motivated. Uh, sees, sees things through. So, you know, generally, uh, further expand upon that. Keeps promises. Nobody saw that. So, that's, those are the virtues. Again, those are based off of just what we had beforehand. Now, flaws. Doesn't let things go. We'll go off. Again, the flaws and the virtues can be the same thing. It can be mirror images of each other. So, sees, th sees things through. So, if he says he's going to come to your house to help you, you know, drywall your bedroom, he'll do it. But also, if it's, say, like an argument just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. I also find it uh, useful when I make a, flirt, a virtue and a flaw, rather, uh, or a flirtue, or a flaw. Uh, I can't talk at the best of times. The day's no different. Well, the virtues and flaws, uh, you can think of something when I make a character, when I think of a virtue... Something that I respect, a quality I respect, but don't necessarily have. And a flaw that I really, really hate and don't necessarily have. So, for instance, one of the things that pisses me off is, I mean, this angers me to no end. And people cause problems that aren't, where they don't need to be. So, like, if you're in an argument, and I've seen this, somebody's in an argument, like, I'm tired of arguing, I'm tired of arguing, I'm tired of arguing. But they continue to argue. Like, once everybody stops, they go on and continue to argue. Even though they keep complaining that they don't want to argue. Things like that. So we'll put that down as a flaw. Or you can also look to your friends and family or people you know, co-workers, uh, you know, students or whatever in your class or classmates rather. Um, pick something you might like and something you don't like. And this also works for um, kind of tertiary characters. Not necessarily like main tertiary characters, not supporting characters, but like again, those characters you only meet for a chapter and a half or something like that. Uh, so you just pick something that you saw somebody do once, or your impression of that person, um, of how they are, and uh, you just go from there. It's a real quick way to uh, streamline the process. So okay, it doesn't let things go. Should probably put go in there. That's also the, could be something that also keeps grudges. Um, you know, it's one of those people that if you're their friend, that's the best friend you can have. If you're the enemy, it's just you've made an enemy for life. Okay, so let's go back up here to see what we have. Affable, inquisitive. Let's go somewhat manipulative. Not entirely manipulative, but when they want something, they Again, see things through to the end, and we'll sometimes use manipulation to achieve the ends. All right. uh, and being affable makes it easier. Inquisitive. Uh, I don't really want to feel anything necessarily bad about inquisitive. Or have a flaw attributed to inquisitiveness. It's also really hard to do it, and I also don't necessarily think inquisitiveness is a bad thing. Although one of the questions I hate more than anything is people are like, oh, hey, what have you been up to? Oh, what do you do? Where do you go to, uh, where'd you go to school? Where'd you work? And things like that. Yes, I realized that I announced that earlier, but it's sort of part and parcel of what we're doing here. But, like, especially when I go to family gatherings, I hate that. Like, oh, what have you been up to? And it's like, oh, how are you doing? Um, how I'm, how I'm doing is I'm choking back the anger and the desire to just punch you in the goddamn head till you stop moving because you asked me that question. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry, positive. I like questions. Uh, I'm kidding. It may sound like I'm being passive-aggressive with my friends. I'm not. I'm just messing with them. Gotta let my dog in. But again, you could put down, like, nosy. Uh, there's another one. You know, you have somebody who wants to know everything about everyone. You know, kind of people that think that 
they're entitled to know like where you went to school or what you did or, or what you do for a living or anything like that because there are people out there and fuck I hate them so I guess I did come up with a bad uh, trait so yeah I guess this works a lot better than I thought it did so say determined motivated um, ends justify the means the means if they get what they want it's very important to have a flaw it's it's easy to create sort of your ideal character in your head a character that has no flaws whatsoever you know we see them you know like mary sue's you know you look at kind of ray from the newest star wars trilogy <coughs> excuse me ray from the newest star wars trilogy and kind of a lot of characters you see now tend to be mary sue's they don't necessarily have a flaw or not a clearly defined flaw like it's somewhat touched upon, but sort of there as kind of like the writer's checking something off. Like, okay, well, I have to have a flaw. And they half-ass it and make some sort of flaw out there. Or they have a glaring flaw that the writer doesn't see as a flaw. Uh, like they're incredibly smug or they think they know everything and they're always right. And the plot kind of proves that they're always right in the end, despite the fact that none of what they said made sense so on and so forth. Um, but it's very important to have a flaw. Because, again, not only does it make a good story, but it also helps you write better. It, it informs a plot. So, again, we'll say this character, just coming up with what we have, uh, background is middle-class, blue-collar, Irish-Dutch from, we'll say Colorado. Um, and... Hmm. Let's say they came back to their hometown. Kind of a classic story. They came back to their hometown after their father died. And, you know, they kind of left on bad terms. Not only the father, but the rest of the family and all their friends and things like that with everybody in town. And as they come back, you know, he's kind of good. You know, you know, he's in a not necessarily a good mood, but, you know, he's, again, affable. You know, he's a good listener. Uh, takes care of everything for his parents, but as time goes on, um, other problems get brought up, and he just can't let it go, and he just kind of pokes and pokes and pokes and makes and makes things worse. And then at the end, he kind of, because he sees things through as a, as a virtue, he kind of uh, resolves these problems, these long-standing problems that he's had, these conflicts, and brings closure. Something like that. We'll go with that. Just like, again, a very rough draft of the story. But you get all that from the character. And again, you can do this for multiple characters. And even if you don't have a... Oh, you know what? Let's move down to past while we're at it now, okay? Um, um, town on bad terms with family and friends. Uh... We won't say why. We'll we'll just do that. Um, normal upbringing, and this can mean whatever you want it to mean. You know, depending on how you define it as a normal upbringing, particularly for Midwest. You know, Midwest could grow up on a farm. I mean, I guess you could grow up on a farm in, say, like New York. But you're far more likely, you know, like the breadbasket area. Of course, in the offhand chance that person listening to this isn't from America, again, wherever your farmland might be in your particular part of the country, so on and so forth. Uh, the home down in bad terms, family and friends, normal upbringing, um, average. And this generally will be very, very extensive, the past part. Um, generally background and, and things like that will be as well, and, and maybe personality, but again, there's just a quick um, quick overview to kind of uh, help you get started. Uh, average student. Uh, learned a trade. Uh, we'll put down metalworking. Went to college regardless. 
this. Uh, graduated. This. A bachelor's in engineering. Probably shouldn't be. Uh, you know, we'll go with mechanical engineering. I know I don't know if Boulder is necessarily a big um, engineering town. Uh, it's just kind of the first the first uh, city from Colorado that I came up with. It popped in my head. Research will also be important too, uh, but that's a whole other that's a whole other set of things. It's just a part of the writing process in general. It doesn't apply only to characters. Um, return for father's funeral. Uh, that's, that's the past. And again, past is sort of broadly defined. It could be from when they were born to all the way to the point when we meet them in the story, kind of like this is. But again, a very broad, um, broad summation of, of his past. Or it could just be what he was doing a week ago before the story, what he or she was doing. Um, again, the only reason I'm using he is that we made a character that's male. Pretty sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to add in a new slide. And uh, we'll say uh, quirks and interests. Again, normally I make these. Uh, I pre-make these. But because this whole idea is coming up with a character from generally scratch, I felt it was much better to uh, kind of do this along with you, uh, do this along with anybody who's uh, watching it, much like previous uh, members of Endless Term have done with their um, art streams, uh, the 3D modeling streams or whatever, uh, just to kind of help you see how the process works and kind of see the benefits of it. Because I had no idea of what kind of character I wanted to make before I started this. Uh, so, let's see, quirks and interest. We'll go. Now, quirks. Now, we all know somebody that does something weird. So, let's, for instance, say, um, like soy sauce on their burgers and fries. Again, some weird like that. We all know somebody in our lives that has that has a really weird kind of food combination or weird way of doing things. Like, it could be some more extreme, like never makes a right turn, only makes three lefts, um, never takes the freeway, uh, will you know always wear their lucky socks when they watch a ball when they watch a baseball game, you know. Excuse me. Things like that. Uh, we're going to interest. We can do this at the same time. Interest. Uh, cyclist. Motorcyclist. Uh, An interesting quirk can also be something that can help you out in the story. Like, for instance, maybe a person has been gone for 15 years and nobody recognizes them. And sort of this other character is sitting at the diner and... Your main character comes in and he orders a burger uh, with a side of soy sauce. And the other character looks up over there and is like, oh my god, that's John Smith. He recognized you from the quarks. Or it could be something like um, maybe he built a motorcycle when he was a teenager, saved up. Um, and we'll say he's in his late 20s at this point. Returned to town and somebody recognized that motorcycle, that kind of Frankenstein you know, chopper, motorcycle, whatever, that John Smith was riding. Uh, we'll say John Smith, the character that we created. Uh, things like that. It can also help you out. And it's also something that fills out the character, makes it feel real. If the character is only moving from, you know, plot point to plot point, that's good, that's fine, but it's always the smaller details, I believe, that 
kind of round out a character and make it enjoyable. Um, a good example of this would be... Uh, hmm, trying to think of a good example. Again, this is Don's end not preparing beforehand. Uh, oh yeah, Tony Stark always holding his, his arm. He heard, I can't remember what movie... In Iron Man, he hurt his arm, but from time to time, he'll grab one of his arms when he's kind of thinking or stressed, um, you know, because he hurt it. And this is just a kind of a small detail, but it's something that helps to connect the MCU. And I'm talking specifically about the MCU here. Uh, another example would be like if you're if you have like some sort of military action or military or some sort of police um, drama. You, know, you have a character that prefers a particular brand of firearm from a company, like the character only uses um, Beretta weapons or something like that, or only uses Smith & Wesson weapons and things like that because they have a preference for it. Uh, these kind of things can kind of help to keep a reader engaged. And it kind of it gives the character more agency because, again, all you really have is words on a paper at the end of the day. It's a reader that makes the character, that, that forms it in their head. You just describe it and hope for the best. So anything can help to for, to ease that transition from words into a fully-fledged character, to a fully-fledged person within the reader's mind, it can only help you. Um, unless you overdo it, I should say. Yeah. As I've said on other videos, you need to know all the rules of writing because there are, you know, there are no rules that you can't break except for one, and that is, it was all just a dream. That's awful, never ever do it. If you do it, I'll find you, and I'm going to stay positive, so I'm going to say I'm going to give you a stern talking to. But for the most part, almost any rule in writing can be broken, but you have to understand the rule and why it's there in order to break it. So you have to have a fully-fledged character, uh, or at least know how to, to make a fully-fledged character in order to make a story where one of these is left out, where you don't follow one of the steps, where you don't describe the physical, the physicality of the character, where their background never comes into play, where you know their personality can shift. It could be a weird story where they reflect off of any character they meet, so on and so forth. But again, you have to understand how a character is made in order to unmake a character and still make it work. And to use another analogy, in at least in martial arts, grappling martial arts, you know, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Judo, when they teach you how to defend against a submission, they teach you how to use a submission in an offensive manner. Because once you understand how the submission is applied, you can defend against it. Similarly, in like boxing, if they want to teach you to defend a hook or a jab, they teach you how to do a jab. Because once you understand the mechanics of the jab, you can, or a hook, you can more easily defend against it because you know what the opponent has to do in order to make an effective jab, in order to make an effective hook. Uh, so let's say, interest motorcyclist, um, uh, engineering, obviously. Maybe likes to fix things. This could be anything, it could also be, you know, putting together Ikea furniture, which I don't know of anybody that actually enjoys that. Uh, but maybe this character likes it. Should probably... So we saw some burgers and fries. I was going to put down ranch. Like, maybe he likes to eat ran uh, fries with ranch. But, it, you know, if you, if you eat french fries with ranch, you, you know, everybody knows that you are, you know. A pe pedophile. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Although if you eat French fries with ranch, you are you are absolutely weird. Don't let anybody ever tell you different. Uh, you're doing something wrong. You're pretty much just slapping Mother Nature in the face. Uh, so yeah, we'll leave it at that. Quirks like soy sauce and the burgers and fries. Motorcycle engineering like things. Things. Let's come up with one more quirk. Um, Hmm. Say uh to play 
football hates watching it. Again, could be kind of weird because, again, most people that enjoy football love watching it and playing it. So just something weird. Something off the... So there's something off the cuff. Oh, it is a better idea. It is a better one. There's something. Uh, funny story. Uh, we actually had this guy. I won't name him. Uh, I don't think he particularly. I don't think he particularly cares. But this is another example of taking from uh, taking from real life in a way, but modified. We had this friend uh, when Joe uh, still lived. Well, he still. Anyways. Joe lived in a house in Cleveland that uh, we had another friend who had an apartment about 15 minutes away. And we'd always meet up at Joe's house and kind of hang out and things like that, and like land party or play board games or whatever. And we'd always invite this character. We'll call him... We'll call him O. And O, without a doubt, would always be like two to three hours late. Most of the time, we had to go get him. Again, even though he lived about 10 to 15 minutes away... It's just a straight shot, basically, from where Joe lived to where O lived. And it just, we don't know why he did it. Uh, he wasn't doing it to avoid us, because if he wanted to avoid us, he just would have said, no, I'm not coming. But it was always really strange and kind of funny to us that he would do that. But again, it's an example of using some uh, using um, an aspect of somebody you know and developing it into a character, or incorporating it into making a character. And, uh, again, we can do this for hours on end, but I don't think anybody wants to sit here and talk, and listen to me talk for hours on end. I mean, I don't really think anybody wants to sit here and listen to me talk for 35 minutes, which is what essentially you've been doing. Um, you poor, poor soul. But anyway, that's basically how you make the outline of a character. And you can use this for a number of things. You can use it for a story, uh, either, you know, literature, a, a, you know, a book, or you can do it for film, television. You can do it for an assignment you have to do in English when you have to write a story. Or if you want to become a prospective writer, you're going to probably do this a lot in workshops. You can do this for D&D characters or tabletop uh, RPGs. You can do this for, you know, video game characters if you want, as I said beforehand, just for fun. Or you can do it for a practice story. Yeah. Well, one of the best ways to learn how to write is to consume stories. Whether that's reading, watching television, watching film, uh, playing video games, things like that. I mean, even bad stories will teach you something. You know, for every, like, True Detective Season 1 out there, there's, like, an American Gods show. That's, you know, we have True Detective Season 1 being a great show, then American Gods being just a god-awful show. Um, and just a god-awful novel. That's a good example of not doing proper research. Uh, you can tell when you, when you, or the value of proper research. Your True Detective, uh, Nick Pizzolatto, did great research for um, uh, True Detective Season 1 and showed. I mean, all the True Detective seasons are good, but one's really the gold standard. It's the crowning jewel of that uh, franchise or that series. And then you have American Gods, and when you read it or watch it, you can very clearly tell that the person who wrote the novel had almost no understanding of America. And then you realize it's written by an Englishman. You're like, oh, wait, that absolutely makes sense. They, by nature, have absolutely no idea about America. But I digress. It's a little more of a personal opinion, not, necess not necessarily shared by everyone else in this terminal. Uh, so, again, that's about it. Like I said, it was going to be a bit of a shorter one. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, feel free to use this. Um, hopefully not the exact description I made, because that'd be kind of a dick move. 
But if you want to use this sort of outline to make a character, uh, feel free. I kind of use this whenever I make characters for the game we're developing. Um, so yeah. Uh, it was good talking to you. It's nice to know that uh, I'm not alone in the world. Or maybe I am. Uh, yeah. Have a nice Easter.